So you mentioned John Money. Of course, this goes back to John Money. John Money introduced the idea of gender identity. He coined the term gender identity, and he said that uh, the gender identity is, is completely separate from biology and that it is something, it is one's identity as male or female, because back then, of course, we didn't have the non-binary and, you know, in between all that, you know, 47 different gender stuff. So in the 50s, when John Money was writing and speaking about all this, we had male and female. And his theory was that male and female is something that is foisted on a, a, a baby, a, a child, um, by society, and that it is unrelated to biology. He further said that men and women, males and females, have biological distinctions, but they are limited to um, uh, menstruating, gestating, and lactating. And that that was it. Aside from those three things, uh, everything else in terms of personality and uh, preferences for activities or, um, you know, cognitive abilities, um, emotional styles, perceptions, that is all, uh, uh, it's a social construct, okay? It's all put on the child uh, in the first two and a half to three years of life. And then John Money said it's fixed. So, you know, when you put the pink blanket on the little girl and the blue blanket on the boy, and then you give them the toys and you give them, you know, you have certain expectations um, based on whether it's a boy or a girl. And all those things, the frilly dresses and the, you know, the 50s was a time, of course, of, of uh, stereotypes. So he spoke about it in terms of, you know, the, the girl's going to be in the kitchen making cookies and the boy's going to be out, you know, fixing the car with his dad. And he said, if you take a girl, uh, uh, you know, with ambiguous... Okay, I'm sorry, let me, let me go back a minute. John Money's specialty, his, his interest was in hermaphrodites, okay, uh, very rare uh, babies that are born with ambiguous genitalia. And those ambiguous genitalia are due to, to some congenital issue, either endocrinological or, or, uh, or due to chrom chrom chromosomal abnormality. And the baby is born, uh, they take a look at the genitals, it's just not clear what's going on. And that's where the term comes from, this is important. Assigned sex at birth. Assigned. Mm -hmm. Because in those cases, and these were the cases that John Money became an expert in, and he opened up a center specifically having to do with, I mean, his PhD that he wrote in the 50s um, was on the issue of sex assignment of hermaphrodites. What do you do? It's a crisis. You have to say we had a girl or we had a boy. And so what do you do in those cases? And he had a special interest in this. Now, you and I know that when someone has a certain interest in their life that consumes them to the point that they, they're writing their PhD about it, they're studying it, they make it their career, there's usually a reason behind it. And it's worthwhile exploring that reason. Now, when you look at John Money, um, when you look at John Money and his early life, and he wrote about this, he was very open about it. He grew up in a, uh, uh, he grew up in a, under the, 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 the hand of an abusive, alcoholic, out of control father who would beat him and his mother. So John Money as a child was not only beaten, but watched his mother being beaten. He no doubt had a terrible childhood, 
And uh, that, that influenced his, his image of masculinity was this mm-hmm. monstrous individual. And yeah. he wrote later on, he grew up on a farm, by the way, and he wrote later on in one of his books that he realized that the world might be better off if not only animals, but men were gelded at birth, castrated. Okay, so gelded is the word you know, used for animals. So he said that the world might be a better place if men were gelded. And he also wrote, he said, I wear the vile mark of male sexuality. In other words, we would call that gender dysphoria. Mm-hmm. He's talking about his own body, and he's saying that his genitals were vile to him. That is gender dysphoria. We didn't call it then. We didn't have a name for it back then. So clearly, John Money was uncomfortable, to say the very least, with his own masculinity and his own body. So it's not a surprise that he would come up with a theory that, if true, would comfort him on some level, that he is not going to become his father. He's not his father. Even though he shares the same type of physical reality, his body, his genitals are are of a man. But if his theory is true, and there's such a thing as gender, which is completely separate than biology, then it gives John, it gave John money like a way out of of not identifying with a monster. 